What's up, guys? Chris Chef Sports Cards here. We are doing 2021 Bowman 10 Blaster Box break number 22, 927 on the clock. We're starting at 930, so just hang out for a minute. We'll get started. Thanks for joining us tonight. Chrissy, what's up, buddy? Jason, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Ugh, I haven't even cleaned up from the weekend. My whole floor is covered with boxes and packs and... Ugh. A mess. What a mess. I make sure this door stays closed very tight at all times so my wife doesn't look in here at the mess that I make after most of the time. Tell her what is going on. How you doing? Ooh. So all everything from the weekend is out and on its way. Went out yesterday. Had a lot of big hits over the weekend. It was fun. Let's see, let's keep it going this week. Maximo. Okay, let's see. You did something to your back. Really? Ugh, that's the worst. I did something to my knee a couple weeks ago, and it's like, I don't know what the hell it is. Like, it's, my knee is so tight. I don't know if it's like arthritis or if I actually, like, injured it, but man, it has been killing me. It's, it's weird. When you get old, you know, like, little things become big deals, you know? <laughs> things I used to shake off when I was in my 20s. You can't do that in your 40s, you know? <laughs> you hurt your back dealing dice while leaning over the table. Probably, I could imagine that would, uh, you gotta lean over with the stick and everything, right? Yeah, I almost broke my neck today. My dog, one of my dogs, I came home, I was running around all day. I had to meet someone to pick up some boxes of cards. I had to go uh, do some stuff for my other business, this and that. I come in. And I have like a kitchen island in my kitchen where my computer's always at. It's like the first thing I hit when I walk in the door. And my dog comes up and lays right behind me, and I didn't know she was there. And I tripped over it. I'm lucky I didn't break my neck, I swear to God. <laughs> I'm lucky I didn't break her neck. <laughs> you have a bad knee? This knee thing is really bothersome. It's really, I, I don't know what it is. I've never had like a knee problem like this. Not since I was a teenager, but it's been going on for a couple of weeks. It sucks. <laughs> All right, what is going on, guys? enough of my ailments and babblings um it's chris with chef sports cards we're doing 2021 bowman 10 blaster box break number 22 welcome to the beginning of another fun week we got tuesday thursday saturday this week um if you are new to the channel welcome uh we a little bit about us we've been around for three years now we ship all cards from every break we're very generous with the top loading and we ship as quickly as we possibly can usually the next day um, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We do a free break every thousand subscribers. We turn to big break, couple thousand dollars worth of boxes. Uh, you want a chance to get into it? All you gotta do is subscribe to the channel. Your name goes in the random, and who knows? Maybe you uh, get one of those spots in the break. And we are coming up on one. We're only about a hundred away from hitting the next thousand, so we'll be doing one in the next month or so. So hit that subscribe button. All right, let's go over the teams, and we will get into it. Orioles, Tom B, Red Sox, Michael T. Cubs, Timothy C, White Sox, Nick P, Reds, Austin S, Indians, Carl S, uh, Rockies, Michael M, Tigers and Royals, Carl S, Astros, Sean R, 
Angels and Dodgers, John R. Brewers, John T. Twins, Donald S. Uh, Marlins, Machala J. Mets, Javier G. Yankees, Machala J. A's, Matthew P. Phillies, Donald F. Pirates, John R. Cardinals, Machala J. Uh, Padres, John R. Giants, Michael M. Mariners, Javier G. Rays, Michael M. Rangers, Jason H. Blue Jays, Eric G. And finally, Nationals, Daniel D. All right, let's do it. All right, let's see what we got going here. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, so somebody explained to me today, I obviously missed something big in the world of sports, and I don't know how, but what exactly did Deshaun Watson do that he's in so much trouble, or potentially in trouble? Because I had sports talk on today here in Philly, and I'm not a huge sports talk guy because I get sick of the fact that they talk about the same stuff over and over and over again. And I guess the Eagles are talking about maybe making a play and going after him, but they're saying they're waiting to see if there's charges or a suspension. What did he do? Did he get in some domestic thing? Or And I, I did a quick search online but didn't come up with anything, but I was kind of busy. Uh, Sean Murphy, top 100. Hendrick and Gilbert Torkelson. So if somebody knows, please let me know. Because I, you know, obviously it passed me right by, whatever it was. <laughs> All right, so if you haven't been in a Bowman break with me before, uh, Alec Baum throwback, Shoemake and Jones. Dominguez, Hose, and Zamora. So obviously we uh, sleeve and top load any hits, variations, parallel, so on and so forth. We also do any top guys, chromes, and we do we we uh, sleeve and top load papers of Martin and Blaze also. We're uh, pretty generous. All right, talent pipeline for the Red Sox. Henderson and Piguero. Inappropriate contact. What does that mean? With a female? I don't... And that's a kind of a general... Because then they were saying they didn't think there was actually going to be criminal charges, but there might still be... The league might suspend them for a while. Uh, future Zach Veen, uh, Blade, and for Washington, Cade Cavalli, number two, 199. That is 171 of 199. To continue with our Nationals Bowman thing from the draft box the other night, although that draft box was phenomenal in the end. You got that uh, Adley variation in that, uh, uh, what's his name from Oakland? I can't think of his name. Soda Strong. He caused a mental damage because he would be nude and she felt that she was forced. Oh. Really? Huh. And was this like a teen massage person or is this just like some rub and tug that he went to for lack of a better term? <laughs> wow. That's Kind of weird. Uh, Jeter Downs, Beatty, and Coar. These guys, I mean, I look, I don't know what the guy did or didn't do. Obviously, I'm asking you guys. I don't know anything about it. But I'll tell you what, if I was somebody who was famous with a lot of money, I think I'd always have someone with me. Like, I'd pay someone just to watch me. Make sure I don't do anything stupid. You know? <laughs> His own fault he met her on Instagram. Why would you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that I would definitely call that his own fault. Because that sounds more like a prostitute than anything, for lack of a better term. I'm sorry to say. Rookie of your favorites, Joey Bart, Rutledge, and Leonard. With Lee Powson and Trammell. I mean, look, I obviously there's legitimate masseuse therapists out there, and they need them as athletes. But why would you go with someone you met on Instagram? Uh, I mean, it sounds like somebody looking for money. 
it, you know? She's trying to fly. <laughs> that sucks, man. I'm telling you, I would have like a... You know, I'm going to pay you just to hang out with me and make sure I don't do any stupid guy with me at the time. Because you can get in a lot of trouble real easy these days. Well, thank you. Thank you for telling me. Now I don't feel quite as uninformed. uninformed. Amaya and Junior Severino. Um, yeah, because I, I guess there, there's a big... I mean, I think there's a few teams that are interested, obviously, if they get rid of them or if they're trying to get rid of that. But the Eagles apparently seem to be high up on that list. Um, but, of course, everyone feels they, they just have to give Jalen Hurts a chance first. So, I, I don't know. Like I said, I just kind of came into the conversation halfway, you know, in the middle of it today. So, all right, futurist Emerson Hancock, Whitley, and Torkelson. That's so crazy. Look, I... There's a lot of scummy guys out there, don't get me wrong, who do a lot of stupid stuff and a lot of just, you know, are predators who straight up. If any of you have seen this documentary that's on HBO right now about uh, uh, the Miramax guy Weinstein, wow, he was, he was a straight up predator, that guy. Um, Ramos, Hose, and Sanchez. But some of these older guys who they've kind of busted on stuff, like, I, I'm not saying it was right, but things were different a long time ago, you know, than they are now. Some of those things they got in trouble for was, as, as horrible as it is to say, was much more accepted back then, you know. I'm not saying it was right, but it's, uh, it's crazy. But, yeah, if you get the chance to see this documentary that's on HBO about him, man, it's like a six-part thing. Uh, Rookie of the Year for Brian Hayes. That Weinstein dude, he was, he was not a good dude. He deserves anything he gets. Originally, Denver wanted him. Was prepared to trade for him a few months ago. Then this came out, and they said, "Man, yeah. well, you know, some like this, and the whole story in L.A. with uh, Trevor Bauer, you know, doesn't help. And I mean, it. Not to say again whether whatever he did. Ooh." A little Christian Pachi rookie to four ninety nine, not bad. Um, you know, as more things tumble, it kind of sheds more light. You know, and it's terrible. India and Kivako. Well, yeah, that Bill Cosby thing. You know that. Him getting released from prison, I mean, that that's my neck of the woods, you know, and the supposed guy, DA, who said he couldn't be, a, um, you know, who he couldn't be convicted of these things, and then they did convict him, that's ultimately why the Supreme Court let him out, uh, Bobby Miller and Robert Powson, is a guy named Bruce Castor, um, oh, and Casey Martin, a four ninety nine for the Phils. For Donald. Um, and Bruce Castor has been known to be a pretty shady guy when he was a DA in this area. Um, so, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, when you're legitimately going around and drugging people and, you know, <laughs> enforcing yourself on them, you should, yeah, you should be in prison for that stuff. <laughs> it's not funny, it's just, it's. It's weird how the jury system works, you know. Still, pretty lots in there was like, I don't know. Oh, really? Wow. I guess he'll be lucky if he doesn't get some kind of criminal proceedings. Although, it sounded today, when they were talking about it, like, ooh, look at this. For the Angels, Jeremy Orocho. This is a retail auto. They haven't really pulled a lot of retail autos out of a retail product, oddly enough. We've been pulling chromes and stuff, but uh, a lot of times some guys like only have a retail auto. What is he? 
27th around, 820th overall in 2017. I'm not familiar with them, but. So there you go for the Angels. Uh, John R. But that's what happens. I mean, remember with uh, Tiger Woods, you know, and, and, you know, once the floodgates opened, Chatham and Bishop. Although, again, too, if, <laughs> I don't know why I'm, why I'm uh, giving HBO so many plugs tonight, but that, H, that Tiger Woods HBO uh, um, thing they did, that documentary, that like two-part series, he was another guy who was, his father was a real scumbag and really, you know, I mean, Tiger's obviously got issues, major issues, you know, beyond even the women. It seems like the drugs are even the bigger issue with what's happened even recently, you know. Uh, Hendricks, futurist. Blazovich and Thompson, but apparently his father was exactly the same way. And when you see that, you know, it's it's taught whether it's meant to be or not. You know, the father was supposed to be quite a womanizer, so I guess it rubbed off on uh, on old Tiger Boy. You know, it's funny people like us, Hunter Green, Top One Hundred, Hall and Foscu. Uh, you know, people like us, everyday people, middle class people who work hard and, 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 and I, look, I'm not saying we're all on the up and up, don't get me wrong, but, you know, none of us are rich and famous and in the public eye or this or that. We're so, like, amazed that some of these people, whether they be professional athletes, actors, singers, whatever it is, can act like such idiots when they have so much, you know? Uh, rookie of your favorite bomb. Vaughn and Yorkie. But at the same time, people turn them into that. You know what I mean? Like, they, they, they're they so... I'm trying to think of the best word for it. I, I guess they're so sought after, not just by the public, but by everyone. That it gives them an excuse to do whatever they want, whereas they do things that you and I would be like, God, I wouldn't do that in a thousand years. You know? <laughs> but uh, Peraza and Bayron Lara. Anyway, but that's the way it always happens. Once someone comes forward, then you find out about the history of someone. You know, it's just a matter of that first person kind of coming out of the woodwork. Uh, Espino and Mitchell. Sabato first. All right, we're getting some polls here. Let's keep it going. Box number four. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he definitely he went way around the bend, that dude. <laughs> well, look at, what's her name? Uh, uh, Britney Spears. She's been all in the... There is a Solaire Neon to $3.99. Man, I haven't seen a Neon Green in a while. To $3.99 for Kansas City. Kansas City. Carl. There you go, bud. Um, and now she's fighting with her father over conservatorship. I mean, she's he's had control of her money for a long time because she's not to. Uh, Thomas and Johnson. Here's a Blazevich paper. Or a uh, Blaze Jordan paper. I'm Blazevich. See, I'm talking too much. I'm not paying attention. Um, I was actually surprised when I started seeing her in the paper talking about it. I thought that was over a while ago, but, you know, she, she obviously went way off that defense. <laughs> now she's just trying to get her life back, you know, from because it sounds like her father's spending all her money. <laughs> He's turned into her. Uh, Evan White, rookie of your favorites. Bitsko and Kelly. That's why I like when you see someone like um, Keanu Reeves or who's the other one I was just talking about the other day. Like they just, well, from what everyone says, are, are just like the most approachable people. Keanu Reeves is supposed to be like the nicest guy in the world, you know. Um, 
Talent Pipeline for the Twins, and Max Meyer and Volpe. And and we kind of sit there and go, wow, he's such a nice guy. He's this, he's that. No, he's exactly how you're supposed to be. <laughs> like, happy that he's rich and famous and good looking. And, you know, like, uh, I mean, the, the, that's the way people should be. It's like I always joke about the baseball players on their cards when they're smiling. Man, if I was a professional baseball player, I'd be smiling ear to ear 24-7, 365. <laughs> I get paid millions of dollars to play a kid's game that I love. <laughs> How can you not be happy? Oh, to take care of the money? Yeah. We're like the Spears situation? Yeah, it should be. Uh, Romo and Marsh. I think that situation, though, she was in really bad shape. Like, I, I think they had to... I think that was kind of an emergency situation. But like I said, I thought that was done with some time ago. I didn't realize he's been running her life for like 12 years now or whatever, you know. Shows you how bad a shape she was really in. Uh, Corbin Carroll, top 100. Robinson and Zamora. Aaron Judge, throwback. Vogel and Freeman. All right. We got six to go. Six to go. Well, you know, it's funny that, I mean, not funny, but like, who was it? There was a, um, oh gosh, I'm not going to, there was a very famous Dallas Cowboy from the 90s teams who they did an interview with one time and they taught, you know, they were talking, he had a, he had a drug problem and, you know, he was in pretty bad shape and this and that. And I saw an interview with him as like, you know, ESPN or one of those things. This was years ago. And he basically said like the same thing in the interview. He's like, well, when you give someone that much money, uh, Downs and Armstrong and that much attention, what do you think we're going to spend it on eventually? <laughs> you know, like he basically was like, I had so much money, I didn't know what else to spend it on, so I figured I'd just buy cocaine. <laughs> you know, a lot of it. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy who's sober, so of course he's being honest with himself at this point, but, you know, he's probably right. Eventually you get to a point and go, well, I've got everything else. Might as well just start buying drugs. <laughs> uh, Corbin Carroll, futurists. Pena and Duran. Sixto Sanchez, top 100. Beater and beer. Gosh, I'm trying to remember who that was. I think it might have been her. You might be right. It might have been her. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. It was a long time ago. But I do remember it was, you know, it wasn't that astonishing. It was just funny to hear, you know. Uh, Rookie of your favorites, Cabrian. There's a Sabato first and a Martin first. A couple of good chromes there. I don't think, you know, especially when it comes to professional sports, well, it comes to any large industry, I don't think we even have a concept of how much money those teams make because the way they pay players and you know, like what the teams are valued at and this and that. And it's like endless if you own a sports team, you know. And God forbid if it's one of the big, you know, one of those New York teams or in a big city or whatever. I mean, it's just it's just the faucet of money, you know. Uh, Taglia and Rodriguez. You know, like they say, um, where was I? I think it was on MLB Network or something. They were saying that, like, you know, some guy, you know, like, um, I don't know, Harper gets paid 20, 25 million a year, whatever he gets paid. They're like, they make that money off his jersey sales. <laughs> you know, like, it's not even, 
you know, his, his merch can pay his salary, you know, uh, Lynch and Dalk was maybe not now, maybe it's not quite as high as it used to be, but still like the numbers and the amount of money that go through these things is just insane. All right. Halfway there, five to go. That's why when you see these old guys who played for like nothing, you know, they were either, well, I think they were just, you know, for lack of a better term, getting screwed, you know, uh, and the owners were keeping every dime. Um, but like, you know, you even go back to like the seventies and early eighties guys were making, you know, 30 grand a year or whatever. I mean, those team owners must've been making millions. Of them. <laughs> uh, Abrams, Dahlquist and Cavalli. And then you see those old guys now. And I mean, the famous ones have made money off of, you know, speaking engagement, signings, this, that, whatever. But the guys who are kind of middle of the road, they're all, you know, broke, poor, whatever. And beat up from the sports, you know. Rookie of your favorites, Nate Pearson. There's Soderstrom and Perdomo. Oh, I know. It's crazy. They, um, so if anyone is from this area who's on the break, uh, we have this, um, there's this place called Chicky and Pete's here in Philadelphia. And some of you might have heard it because they always get like national recognition and stuff. Uh, Miami, Talent Pipeline, Walston and Gomez. And Chicky and Pete's is a sports bar. Okay, it started in Northeast Philadelphia, literally like a hole in the wall, just a bar, but people started hanging out there and this and that. And Chicken Pete's has what are called crab fries, okay? Now, I know everybody here knows what crab fries are. You know, they're just French fries with Old Bay seasoning, and then they serve like cheese sauce with it, right? But the brilliance of Chicken Pete's was they actually trademarked it. So if you anywhere within like 200 miles of this town try and sell crab fries, you'll get sued by Chicky and Pete's in a minute. Uh, Nova and Waters, they actually have like lawyers on retainer just to send. I've received cease and desist letters from them more than once in my career. And so the way um, Chicky and Pete's got really famous was, like I said, they were a small bar and restaurant in Northeast Philly. Locals went this and that. They opened a place near the stadium, and they turned into kind of like the unofficial sports bar of the stadiums, of the players and stuff, right? Uh, Nate Pearson, top 100. Westberg and Alec Manoa. And basically went out. Hey, whoever did their PR was brilliant. I mean, they really were. They started getting like the sports talk radio guys in. They do shows from there every week. All the players do shows. And now Chicken Beats is huge, right? They have, I don't know how many locations, maybe 15 in the region. But they have a place in the stadium, in both stadiums, the football and uh, baseball. Uh, Bobby Witt, throwback. Arias first and Veen. And so they make crab fries. That's what they're famous for. And basically, it's just French fries with Old Bay seasoning and cheese sauce. <laughs> they have huge outlets in the stadiums. That's what they sell. I think they get like $16 for crab fries at the stadium. And I, when I tell you there is never a line that's not more than 500 deep at that place from the second the game starts to the second it ends. Like, and I sit there and just shake my head. I'm like, these guys are selling like a buck worth of fries. <laughs> They're going to kill him. You know? Uh, I don't, I don't even know, because I haven't been to a Phillies game in a while. I'm not even sure what a beer is at the games here these days, but I think last time I went, I know last time I was at a game, I think beers were 14, maybe? And the one that really killed me was, uh, Spencer Howard, Top 100, Cabrera and Kalenic, oops. Dominguez, Rushman, and Foscue. They were doing mixed drinks. So like, but they were like already bottled, kind of like the um, like Jack Daniels cooler type of things would be. But it was like rum and coke, vodka tonic, this, that, whatever. And they were $24 a piece. 
And I remember watching people buy them like two at a time. <laughs> I'd be like, no, I'm not a drinker. Okay, like I'm I'm sober. I've been 17 years sober. I had my uh, time when I was younger, you know. And but even when I was. And I did like to party. The one place I never did was when I went to a stadium. Because I used to think, it's such a waste of money. Like, uh, Joey Bart, Feliciano, and Carol. I used to go to e Eagles games. Which, first of all, are like impossible to get tickets to. And very expensive. And everybody would be outside tailgating. Which, again, is fine. You know, it's great. But they get so drunk. They'd be stumbling into the stadium. <laughs> and I mean, like... If you're going to get this drunk, why don't you stay home? You know what I mean? And get this drunk and watch a game. At least you don't spend, you know, four or five, six hundred hours at the game, you know? There is a uh, cracked ice and Nate Pearson throwback to 150, 119 of 150 for Toronto. Because I'm not talking about, you know, some guy with a buzz on. I'm talking about people who are blinding drunk. <laughs> And as I'm sure many of you know, especially a vet stadium, Philadelphia was famous for that. We had the court in the in the in the stadium. Uh, Ray's talent pipeline, Jarvis and Gore. Um, they actually had a drunk tank and a and a court. This guy named uh, I think it was she Seamus McCaffrey was the judge. He used to sit in there during an Eagles game, and they'd bring all the drunk guys in and arrest them and arraign them right on site. <laughs> But I never understood that. Like, 100 bucks for your ticket to the game, you know? Garrett Marshall, Marshall Futures. There's a Acosta. Hassle. Um, you know, 100 bucks for your ticket to the game, right? For an Eagles game. If not more. You know, all right, you tailgate, but then you get inside. Let's say you spend another 100 bucks on drinks inside. So you're 200 bucks down. You don't remember a thing that happened because <laughs> you're so blind and drunk. But it was a great time, <laughs> you know. You could have done the same thing with a, you know, 20 bucks at home <laughs> and a couple buddies over. Got a case of beer and, you know. Uh, Carlson, top 100. There's a Blaze in green. There's a Martin and Jordan Westberg to 4.99 for the Orioles. Tom. Yeah, I, I think 14 is what it was last time, but like I said, it could have gone up since then. Look, I got nothing against people partying and having a good time. Nothing against it at all. I'm Knock yourself out. Yeah, it's not what I do anymore, but that's cool. But That's the one I don't get. <laughs> I even understand it at like a baseball game because baseball's slower. You know, like... You don't really have to pay too much attention. <laughs> Come on, Josh, show you stuff, buddy. That's kind of what's fun about baseball. You can kind of chat and have a drink and, you know, all that stuff and then still be part of the game. Uh, rookie, your favorite's Casey Mize. Adams and Dingler. De La Rosa paper. All right, three to go. Oh really? Is that true? Is that a what? They don't serve alcohol at the at the uh, casino. Oh, they do here. <laughs> That's all. They give it away for free here. In Atlantic City, Pennsylvania, wherever, man, you don't pay for drinks when you go to the casino. They just bring them to you, as long as you're gambling. Wow, I never heard that. I never knew that. Uh, Torkelson, top 100. Amaya and Luciano. Huh. So do you guys not have... Uh, they do have bars, but you... Like, so... What do you do? Like, if somebody has a drink, they can't come up to the table and start gambling, and you have to, they have to get rid of the drink? I mean, it's kind of a smart thing, I guess. I'm sure it takes away a lot of liability, but I'm sure it also... Keeps a lot of inhibition straight, too. 
Uh, Ricky, your favorites, Christian Javier, Whitley, and Torkelson. Waters. It's a state law, but you can't be drunk on the floor. So you have to make a call if somebody's drunk, like, sorry, dude, you're too wasted to gamble. Huh. Yeah, in, in uh, Atlantic City in Pennsylvania, it's like... What can I get for you, hon? <laughs> the second you step up to the table. <laughs> I mean, there are some rules around it, but they'll they'll feed you drinks till your eyes fall out if they can. Uh, Talent Pipeline Atlanta. Cody Hose and O'Neill Cruz. They can drink at the table, but they can't be drunk. Oh. Have you ever had to kick someone out, Chris, for being being too drunk? Or tell them that they must hate that, man. Wow. I've had to cut people off in restaurants. They're ready to cut my head off, usually. Uh, Brujan and Rushman. I can't imagine what somebody would do if you were, they were gambling. And you were like, sorry, man, you've had too much to drink. Jeez. People get really mad when you cut them off in restaurants. I can tell you that. <laughs> really mad. Because, of course, no one's drunk, you know, until they're stumbling out the door. Uh, Magical, top 100. India and Maina. I wonder if that's all anywhere else. I've never heard that before. Well, I'm sure it is. I mean, it's. I'm sure it's. Like I said, smart for the casino and stuff. Probably. I'm sure people try and sue all the time to say they were overserved, and that's why they did whatever they did. Uh, Casey Mize, thirty fifth. Uh, Miller and Pouse. All right, two more to go. Then we'll do a hit recap. Um, we got Series 2 at 10.30 tonight. We got going later. Uh, Gypsy Queen and Stadium Club on Thursday. Stadium Club is going through the roof price-wise. Going up like 40 50 bucks a box this week. It's crazy. People are way into Stadium Club. Uh, Taylor Trammell and Nick Matten. Oh, I'm sure you could. Oh, I could tell you crazy stories, too, in the restaurants, especially uh, back when I used to run the steakhouses and stuff. Oh. Money does not buy class. Let's put it that way. <laughs> That's the one thing I learned. Very quickly working in very high end restaurants in my life. Just because you have money doesn't mean the, the, the stuff that people used to do was just flabbergasting sometimes. Uh, futurist Riley Green, Baz and Langoliers. It was, it was, most nights it was like a high school kegger in that restaurant. Uh, Josh Jung, top 100. Detmers and Xavier Edwards. Chris, is that what you usually do? Like deal dice? Is that, or do, do you change up? Uh, rookie, your favorite's Carlson. Tarang and Bailey. Kerstadt and CJ Abrams. Wonder Franco paper. <laughs> I'm on the craps table. Oh, you do everything. Okay. Oh, man. 
<laughs> I can't imagine. Ugh. Uh, Kirby and Richardson. All right, box number ten. Are you do sports books too? Is, is Sportsbook pretty new to Iowa? It's newer to Pennsylvania. I mean, it's only been, what, like two years now or something like that. Although, you know, you could just go to, you know, to Atlantic City, which is less than an hour away, or um, <laughs> Delaware. Delaware is weird. They Well, I don't know if they do it anymore, but uh, O'Neill Cruz Top 100, Mauricio, and Stott. They used to, and they probably still do. I just, I haven't been there in a long time, so I don't know. You remember how, like, when you were, or years ago, you used to get, like, the pool that you would bet, you know, like, the local mobsters or whatever would run it, and you'd get a slip of paper, and you'd pick your teams and pay, you know, five bucks, ten bucks, and if you hit on the teams, you'd win the pot, whatever it was. The state of Delaware basically does that, or did, anyway. I don't know if they still do. So, like... The same place you would go to buy tickets for a lottery, you would go and you put your picks in. Um, so Torkelson, 35th. Witt and Manning. So there were always ways to still do sports book around here. It wasn't that far away. You know? Gotcha. It's good money, though, working at a casino, right? Like dealing and stuff. I've that's why I've always heard it does does pretty well. Uh, talent pipeline for the Pirates: Hunter Green and Montero. Keone Kivako. Uh, Torkelson Futurist. Wells and Ramos. Yeah. I, always, I mean, I always assume dealers do. I'm not I'm big in... I, I like to play cards every now and again, but I'm not really big on going to casinos. Not for any particular reason. It's just something I never really got that into. Uh, Langoliers Top 100. Gonzalez and Vavra. And the last pack of the break. Bomb. Joe Adele, rookie of your favorites. Uh, Hancock and for Cleveland. Carson Tucker, numbered... 33 of 99 for the Indians for Carl. And just a little something on top for Pittsburgh. Piguero. 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 I still don't know how to say this guy's name. 140 of 250 for the Pirates for John. Oh, oh. My son must be home. <laughs> Chris Damon? Who's who's Chris Damon? I'm not familiar with that name. That's why I'm curious. All right, guys. Give me a second. Let's put a quick hit recap together, and then we will get out of here. Uh, da -da. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hits. Not too bad. Not too shabby. Oh, he used to set all the odds. Yeah, that's a. They, they, you got to be quite a person to, to be an odds maker, man. <laughs> I mean, that's. 
I don't know. I never, I, I, like I said, I, I've been addicted to many things in my life. Gambling was never really one of them. I have a hard time. I work, I always worked really hard for my money. I get so angry when I lose. I get very happy when I win, just like everyone, but I would get so angry when I lost that it, I just was like, you know what? Screw this. I'll hold on to what I got. <laughs> like, like I said, I'll play cards every now and again. I'm not bad. I can, I can hold my own in, in, in a card game, but, uh, I wouldn't go out of my way, you know, because anytime I lose, I'm just so angry. I can't. <laughs> All right, guys, we're doing hit recap for 2021 Bowman 10 blaster box break number 22. All right. Why is it? Come on, Blaze. Focus up, man. All right. Let's go over Blaze paper. Austin Martin paper. Matten. Torkelson. Uh, Jordan. Chrome. Acosta. Arias. Gomez, Sabato, Martin, Torkelson, and Junior Severino. These will be top loaded, of course. And then hits and parallels. We had Christian Pachi, rookie to four ninety nine. Nice one there. Casey Martin to four ninety nine. Uh, Solaire to three ninety nine. Westberg to four ninety nine. Pegrero to two fifty. Uh, Cavalli to one ninety nine. Nate Pearson with the uh, throwback insert to 150 cracked ice uh, for Toronto. Carson Tucker for the Indians to 99. And then we had the one retail auto, Jeremy Orocho for the Angels. Our company is from England. Oh, really? The, the, like the, the, the um, casino company is from England? Well, they know, they know how to gamble over there, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, guys. Again, thank you so much for joining me tonight, as always. If you're not in our other break tonight, please stay safe, stay healthy out there. Hit that like and subscribe, and I'll be back in about 10 minutes for Series 2. Have a good night. Take care. Bye.